Hi folks and welcome to the Irish History Podcast. My name is Finn Dwyer and thanks for tuning in. While I'll be introducing the land war in a few minutes, I'm going to kick off with a quick story about how I put these podcasts together. So there's actually two people, I guess you could say, involved in getting this show out. Myself and another person who works away in the background. You see, these shows, I guess you could say, are basically a lot of books distilled into accessible history you can listen to on the go. And while I make the podcast, the other person is tirelessly working away, slowing down the whole process. Any of you who have used public libraries are going to be well acquainted with this other person. They are that guy who borrows books from the library, but never gives them back in time. So at the moment, I'm preparing to make my upcoming series on the Great Famine through 2017. And I really need to cut this person out of the process because I'm waiting for books that I need but haven't a clue when they'll be back on the shelves. And next year, this will really slow the process down. There's a simple solution. Well, there's actually two. Firstly, if you live in Dublin and like reading about the Great Famine, please, please, please drop the books back into the library on time. But secondly, you can help by becoming a patron of the series. Over the last few weeks, I've been running a major crowdfunding drive to make that podcast series on the Great Famine in 2017 at the website patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. It's really easy to get involved and as a patron, you will get lots of rewards from extra podcasts to episode guides and even online discussions. With 82 listeners just like you signed up so far, I've just reached my initial target, which was $500. However, my next target is $1,000, and this is a pretty important goal, because once I reach that figure, I'll be able to buy my own copies of the core texts I need and remove that anonymous guy in the library from the process. I really would like to be well on the way to reaching that target by Christmas, and I think with your support, it's achievable. You can get involved today at Patreon, that's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash Irish podcast. That's Patreon dot com forward slash Irish podcast. When you become a patron, you get lots of bonus content. For example, I've just released my first exclusive patrons podcast on the Land War, which is the background to the Phoenix Park murders and the Mam Trasna murders. Now next, I'm going to give you a snapshot of that show so you can get a sense of what you'll be getting. By the early 1870s, Ireland seemed to be finally putting the terrible experiences of the Great Famine behind it. During those dark years of starvation, one million people had emigrated and nearly another million had died. The island had been impoverished. Between 1848 and 1851 alone, 58,000 families had been evicted from their homes and plunged into utter destitution. However, by the 1870s, Ireland seemed to have turned a corner. Emigration, which had been soaring since the end of the Great Famine in the early 1850s, finally began to slow down as the economy was doing well. However, appearances can be deceptive, and while there was no question that life for many was improving in the 1870s, many, if not most, still lived no more than a failed harvest or an economic recession away from utter destitution. Overall, Ireland was still a deeply unequal society. 800 families owned 50% of all land. For the poorer peasants who rented land from these families, their long-term hopes had not improved much since the Great Famine. In some respects, their opportunities were declining. Since the 1850s, more and more land was being given over to cattle herding rather than growing crops. As cattle herds were less labour intensive, that meant that there was simply less work to go around. However, the economic successes of the early 1870s did mask this inequality at the very heart of Irish society. But in reality, most peasants were still living on or just above the breadline. Their economic insecurity was underpinned by the fact that they, as tenants, had very few rights to speak of and paid rents that were, generally speaking, way beyond the value of the land. Even in good years, many of the poorer tenants in the west of Ireland in particular had to travel to England or Scotland at harvest time to work on farms there just to pay the rent. Nevertheless, the uncertainty of life was masked by the economic stability of the early 1870s. However, in the middle of that decade, this stability that papered over the cracks at the heart of Irish society began to falter and an explosive situation developed in the west of Ireland, a situation that would explode into the land war in 1879. 
Now, while a global recession was taking hold in the USA and Europe, which would eventually take its toll in Ireland, there were other, more concerning pressures unique to Irish society. Emigration had long been essential to stop tensions in Ireland building up, as those who desired change simply upped and left. However, through the 1870s, emigration from Ireland had trailed off, as the USA was gripped by a deep recession, and things at home weren't that bad, as I've said. This left large numbers of people in Ireland as the economy began to falter from around 1877. Serious alarm bells were sounded in that year of 1877 when the potato crop, still the staple diet for millions, failed. A deeply concerning event. This was followed by a cholera epidemic that impacted hen stocks. Poultry and eggs, which had become a major aspect of the rural economy in recent decades, were decimated. Agriculture, the basis of the economy, faced a complete collapse. Rural tenants, many of them renting plots of land, no more than a few acres in size, were struggling to survive. They soon fell into rent arrears. By early 1879, the situation was dire. Shopkeepers in the west of Ireland were owed £200,000, a huge sum for the time, and could not afford to extend credit lines any further. Many families had fallen deeply into rent arrears, and when the harvest failed again that year, famine loomed on the horizon. To add to this explosive cocktail, building in the west of Ireland, the seasonal work in England and Scotland, on which many depended, was in short supply that year. This deepened the economic crisis while simultaneously ensuring there were large numbers of adults who normally left Ireland now remaining in the country. Tenant families with little hope of paying their high rents began to brace themselves for eviction. Tension was building. Indeed, there was already evidence that rural Ireland was on the verge of major upheaval. In 1875, there had been only 136 agrarian crimes, their incidents arising from land-related disputes. However, by 1878, this had increased to 300 in number, accounting for 11% of all crime in Ireland that year. This was little wonder, given many in Connacht in particular feared a repeat of 1845 and the Great Famine was on the cards. In that fateful year of 1879, the west of Ireland would explode in one of the biggest rebellions in Irish history, that is, the Land War. The rest of this show includes fascinating stories from across Ireland, including this one from Shanna Crane near Dunmanway in County Cork. In July 1880, the local landlord, a Captain Craig, successfully evicted Daniel and Mary Hurley along with their children from their home in Shanna Crane near Dunmanway, County Cork, as they were unable to pay their rent. Afterwards, the landlord, Craig, rented the farm to a new tenant, the widow Leary, who ran a shop in the area. This act of renting the farm of someone who had been evicted, called land grabbing, was one of the most despised acts in Ireland. The new tenant was exploiting the misery of the evicted family. However, in this case, the new tenant, the widow Leary, did not last long in Hurley's home. Late on the evening of the 18th of December, 1880, this was a week before Christmas, the previous tenant, Mrs Mary Hurley, arrived at the house accompanied by six armed and masked men and told the widow Leary to leave. The widow begged for 24 hours, protesting that it was a cold night, but Mrs Hurley and her children forced her from the building and moved back in. The widow's furniture was then thrown into the yard, and at gunpoint she had to swear she would never return. With nowhere to go, the widow Leary then approached her neighbours, but they would not open the door to her. No one wanted to be associated with a land grabber. The widow Leary, however, went to the police, who arrived the following morning and arrested Mrs Mary Hurley, who cried, Let them arrest me, but I'll remain here. The Land League will do it for sure. My father and grandfather lived here for 80 years, and the widow Leary must not be in my house. She then turned to the Widow Leary and said, Do you think the Land League will allow you to be in this house? Before going on to threaten her with the most lethal of League tactics, the boycott. The full show, which tells the story of the Land War, including how the term boycott was invented in the west of Ireland during this conflict, is available now at patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. You can get that 30 minute podcast by signing up as a patron today. You will not only get the show, but also the episode guide and future monthly podcasts. That's all available now at patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. If you get on board today, you can help me reach that important target of $1,000 by Christmas. That address one last time is patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast.
Next week, I will be returning with a fascinating story of an unusual Irish emigrant who left Ireland in 1906 to move to South Dakota. That woman was Mary Guinevere de Ware, my grand-aunt, and her life story is pretty fascinating. So until next time, Sloan, and thanks for your ongoing support. 